Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today's show features a conversation around healing and money. So if you're unhappy about your money situation, learn how to turn your money and finances around to happy money. Yes, indeed. Back for a second time in the show is the Japanese maverick, Ken Honda. Very exciting that he is here again today. He's been so kind. He stepped out of his own retreat that he's given right now in Japan in real time to be with us today. So we will get with him in just a minute. The Dare to Dream show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award, and we won the Coalition for Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. And Dare to Dream is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dade here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. If you would like to be a facilitator or do energy work or have it done on you or go to one of their courses, go to Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, here, H-E-R, dot com or Access consciousness.com. And I am Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility expert. I show entrepreneurs, speakers, authors, people just like you, how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts, how to write a highly engaging page turner book. And then my company turns your book into a guaranteed international bestseller. And I have a course coming up. I know the last time I did it, many of you found me from the podcast. So join us if you're ready to be interviewed, but don't know how, or maybe you're doing it and you're not quite getting the results that you thought you would. You wanna go to debbyd.net slash challenge. And this is the five day podcast interview challenge. What will you get? You're gonna learn how to get a yes in order so you are scheduled on radio and podcast and media interviews. Where are the right shows for your expertise? Have your talking points prepared to give to the host for your interview. I show you how to do all of this, align with the right podcast for hundreds of bookings. Have your media info ready, the correct approach to get a yes for an interview how to engage with influencers, be introduced to hundreds of new clients, followers, sell books, fill workshops, and increase your email database. One of my classes has come to an end and I heard from one of the gals, her first interview ever, she only had 700 people watching her in an interview on YouTube and she reported she got five people who have connected with her to talk further and just got two brand new clients. Her first interview. So just imagine if you did five of those in a month, how would that impact your business? What's possible? So learn how to do this so you can get massive results. The program is rolling out. Will you be one of the lucky ones to learn and use this amazing and very important skill of being visible? and being interviewed. Go to debbid.net slash challenge. That's debbid.net slash challenge. And I look forward to working with you. So yes, indeed, today we're speaking with a man who asks, is your money smiling? <laughs> My guest is Ken Honda, author of Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. Money and happiness expert Ken Honda is a best-selling self-development author in Japan with book sales surpassing 8 million copies. Ken studied law in Tokyo and worked as a business consultant and investor. Ken's financial expertise comes from owning and successfully managing several businesses. His writings bridge the topics of finance and self-help, focusing on creating and generating personal wealth and happiness through deeper self-honesty. Ken provides ongoing support through mentoring programs, business seminars, therapeutic workshops, and correspondent courses. He's fluent in Japanese and English. He lived in Boston, Massachusetts for two years and currently resides in Tokyo, Japan. You can learn more at KenHonda.com. Com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Ken Honda back to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Hello, Debbie. I'm so happy to be back on your show. It's been three years. 
It's been three years. You were last on the show in September 2019. And little did you and I know that about four months later, the world was going to turn on its axis. Yes, so yes. It's amazing. Tell me, how did you fare through the pandemic? So I was lucky to be able to um, have more time with my family. Hmm. And uh, uh, where I am is a two hour ride from Tokyo. So uh, there are more deer than people. Oh. And uh, so this place, uh, we have so many rooms. Uh, so um, and there is no lockdown situation in Tokyo or in Japan. So our life is very calm and nothing really did change. Uh, the only thing is like I don't have to be at the party somewhere uh, for my friends, you know, uh, seminars and stuff. So uh, uh, through the, the, the past uh, two years, uh, we really enjoyed very quiet time. Now we're back in more busy meeting people, uh, which I enjoy. But those uh, few years are the peace, most peaceful uh, mm. after I got out of uh, semi-retirement almost 20 years ago. Wow. And did you do anything? Were you working on any projects besides looking at deer and enjoying your family? Yeah. So I started an online uh, salon, which may be a little bit unique, uh, but uh, um, online salon is an interesting um, way of uh, connecting people. So I have one of the uh, largest online salon in Japan. So um, one time we, we hit about like 20,000 people on, uh, online. Uh, it's a subscription membership so we get together uh once or twice a month uh, and talk about a lot of life issues mm -hmm. so during the pandemic i was the one who connected everybody so we sort of like as a whole group we just share everything together and then we got through so we have this comradeship that we've been together and so we have like a big family now and now i'm doing a, a similar thing in uh, english speaking community so and uh, last year oh uh, no, no no last month i, I did uh, a world tour around um from europe to us australia and back so i met uh, those people who i just only met in zoom oh, wow. so it was so much fun to go oh, around yeah. the world meeting my zoom friends so i felt so weird that they they, they like came out from the screen <laughs> that must have been amazing um kudos to you for creating a safe space for people. That must have really meant a lot. I think people needed connection so deeply, it became apparent to all of us, whether we're introverts or extroverts or half mm -hmm. and half, we really need each other. Yes, indeed, and I'm half and half. You know, mm -hmm. part of me uh, is very quiet and shy, so I don't mind being here for two weeks alone or with my family, just keep writing. And the part of me just enjoy to talk to thousands of people or being uh, at the party with 200 people. Uh, so um, this uh, mountain time is like very quiet time for me. Beautiful. So let's talk about money and see if we can help some people. Great. Um, first, what is emotional intelligence when it comes to money? How do you define that? Yeah, so money emotional intelligence is how healthy you are with your money. You know, it doesn't really matter how much you have or how much you make. It's about how you relate to money. Unfortunately, most most of us relate to money in a, our own unique way. A lot of us became a spender, a warrior, and a money maker, and a, a saver. We ended up being a certain type, um, depending on what we believe. But if we spend too much, if we save too much, if we make too much, it's not good for you. <laughs> That's I hope uh, um, one day if I become a prime minister of Japan, I want to print them in uh, in yen. You know, uh, making too much, saving too much um, is is not good for your health. <laughs> you know, I want that those lines uh, on on bills. Okay. So yes, I know in your book, you break down the different places we can go. And I'm sure that people who are listening can self-identify and say, yeah, it's true. I make money and it disappears mm -hmm. or I overspend or I'm, I'm a debtor or 
I'm so concerned about the future. I save and I save and I save, or I undermake, or I over earn, mm -hmm. and et cetera. So yeah, we've all got our lane. So where does that stem from? I was wondering, is it really important when we grow up that parents talk about money, that we get groomed for money? And then if we weren't, where does that leave us? You know, uh, we are we all weren't really taught about money by our parents so if our, our parents didn't teach us uh did our school teachers uh teach us i mean school teachers are far from uh, being a good teacher when it comes to money so and so we learn from brothers and sisters and uh, or or our neighbors uh, or our colleagues so uh, the funny thing is we've never learned formally about money um in our entire life so I've done a lot of seminars, uh, money seminars in my life, and uh, many students say, this is my first time in my life, and I'm 54, and uh, I've never had any uh, money education. And, and so what, did, what have you done? And, 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 and my student will say, that's why I'm here. I'm so messed up. You know? So <laughs> nobody told us what to do and how to manage things. And if you are a good manager still, you cannot really enjoy money. Money is to be enjoyed, not mm. to be worried about or just scared about. Yeah, it's true. You know, three very important things. Parenting, never talked about. We're supposed to figure it out. Sex, never mm -hmm. talked about it. We're supposed to figure it out. Money, never talked about. But, you know, we learn other things that maybe are not so germane to our lives. And it is frustrating to get out into the world and be an adult and figure it out. So people come to you, you've got someone at your seminar right now, 54 saying, oh my goodness, um, I'm here, you know, can you help? And I'm sure someone's life is gonna be turned around by virtue yeah. of working with you. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for people to heal these wounds? So the most important thing is that uh, you feel uh, appreciation and love around money uh, because um, money can be love. Um, I, I look at uh, everything as energy. So uh, in your life, what kind of energy is flowing in your house, flowing in your uh, workplace, flowing between you and your partner or in your family? Uh, uh, and it's related to how we make money. If we make money by doing what we love, there's a lot of laughter, smiles, and uh, appreciation. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a good coach, you are good at uh, and coaching people, uh, your clients appreciate you, you receive the money with a smile. Mm -hmm. And so you can spend that money with happy feeling to your family and to charity. And, and when you pay bills, you smile too. But when we do things that don't really bring you joy, you feel irritated to begin with. So when you receive a check, you get resentful because mm. you're getting this little for all the sacrifice you made. Mm. So uh, if your kids are uh, wasting your money, you get upset because the, the precious uh, money that I earned out of my sacrifice gets wasted. That's why uh, our parents used to scold us, you know, yell at us because they were upset long before we do something wrong. So we just uh, trigger them to get upset. And also when we pay bills, we feel upset because uh, we, are, we exchange our life force, precious life force energy with money. So uh, when we pay bills, we feel like a part of our body gets ripped off almost. Mm. And then we feel sacrificed and then resentful for uh, uh, outrageous prices these days, gas, electricity, food, everything is going up so we feel like we are drowning in the water of bills mm -hmm. yeah and then if you add debt to it that's very difficult um, for people do you have methods for folks let's say somebody does have a tremendous amount of debt and mm -hmm. does feel like they're drowning and doesn't really see a way out like i'm going to spend my life even attempting to pay this off meagerly what do you recommend like how do you work with people so that they can turn that around yeah so um a student of mine uh, came to me and shared a beautiful story um his father passed away and and then uh they um, found out that uh, uh his father's company owed 
three million US dollars. Uh, and, and then he could have just given up the inheritance, meaning that he, um, he doesn't inherit his debt, he fought his father's debt. But uh, strangely, he accepted it uh, because that's what his uh, father owed. I think I should pay. You know, that's, that's very Asian you know, to save uh, his father's honor. And he left his job and started working. And for the 10 years, he was, um, he put all the energy in paying all the debt back. So in literally, he had to make $600,000 to pay uh, the debt. Um, so uh, he worked so hard, he, he thought of, uh, he came up with great ideas, because he had to pay back the debt. And he did it in 10 years. But he still kept this working earning ability and he by then he had this ability to make one million profit so in a few years he became a millionaire so in retrospect he, he shared with me his father didn't leave a debt his father leave left him with a, a, a business school that gave him the power to earn one million dollars every year mm. so he forever appreciates his father yeah. and his father's debt because that debt made him strong and then made him more creative made him focus more on business when he if he was working in a, a company he would never made that much money so uh, if you just turn around uh what you uh, relate to that um you can be so free from money in a few years the only thing is how you relate to money yeah. So tell me what you're hearing. You've got a retreat going on right now. It's live. Yes. You said this is your third day. You woke mm -hmm. up early just to be with me. What are you for hearing? For everybody too. <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what what is the tenor that's going on in your retreat of the people who are attending? What is what is the focus for most people? What is the wound? Where do you see the gift? Mm -hmm. What is the pattern that's unfolding there? Yeah, this three day retreat is how to become a writer and uh, best selling author. So they're already, you know, some of them already, they've sold um, hundreds of thousands of copies uh, uh, already, but uh, they are here to uh, find who they are. And at the core of your trauma, at the core of everything what happened to you, you can scoop up the energy that um, kept you going. And that energy can serve other people too. For example, if somebody had a, a tough relationship, uh, um, the, one of the students got out from uh, ugly divorce and all that, so she can share her ideas of how to find uh, peace in the middle of, of ugly divorce. And there are other people who suffer from um, uh, a certain illness and then they got out uh, and learn about a lot about how to eat uh, like a microbiotic way or healthy food. Uh, some of them became chef. And then she released her book about a few months ago. And uh, uh, that book became a national bestseller now. So uh, she got sick. That's bad news. But uh, the, the way she kind of came up with uh, her own recipe for herself and also for her family is making her uh, very famous here. Mm -hmm. So all the bad things that happened, that all the bad things that seemed that happened uh, years ago, is actually the same energy that's going to transform your life and then transform others. So um, uh, um, negative things that happen in your life are usually the one to give you the energy if you are aware of it. Yes. This is so pertinent right now in my life and never an accident, the synchronicity that you would bring this up mm -hmm. because this is something we hear. We're in a spiritual community. We hear this, we know this, but to know it is one thing. To actually be able to apply it to your life is magic. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with somebody right now who is breaking down a particular relationship for me uh, that was difficult in my childhood and acknowledging that difficulty like this person had no right xyz however i want to show you who you've become i want you to understand what you had to do to supersede that he was showing me the arc and the magic 
And I felt appreciation truly for the first time I was able to be distant from that relationship and have so much appreciation for what my soul agreed to experience Mm -hmm. like wow and then once I accepted that I stepped outside into my backyard and suddenly I had this flood of thinking you know thinking about somebody else currently who is a, a little bit difficult and you know had brought some difficulties that had nothing to do with me but into my path and thinking about them and saying wow look what i did i could have laid down and rolled over but instead you know i got on this healing path like what needs to change in my space that i would even attract this and healing all that and having so much appreciation and that appreciation honestly it completely transmutes the energy it takes the victim out and we become so empowered over the situation instead, Mm -hmm. right? Yes, exactly. So when you share this, you know, these difficulties that your students have been through and now they're writing books about it and, you know, cookbooks and becoming famous, I love it because we talk about how our mess becomes our message and our wound becomes our gift. And those become platitudes after a while. But when you can really live that out loud, and that becomes your song to the world. I think that is so powerful for us as beings, you know, to step out of the weight of what a difficult situation does and instead learn to empower ourselves over it. Yes, exactly. So I feel like I'm, a, um, I'm on the uh, front row seat, like, uh, observing what's going on. So it's so beautiful how people find uh, the, the the biggest love out of all the sufferings uh, in the past, and it's so um, amazing how they transform themselves into becoming a, a best-selling author. And that's so perfect. It's great transition because a quote from you, Ken, is "Whatever happens, you can say thank you. Thank you are the two most powerful words that will help you to start to transform your relationship with money." clearly, as we're talking also with life and circumstances, break that down around money. What do you mean by that? What's the connection between thankfulness and finances? I did a um, fun experiment when I was doing accounting and consulting. I divided my clients into two groups. One, I brought some Japanese tea, books, and small, like a $5, $10 gift. And the other, I didn't do anything, you know, for, um, for a test. And for uh, the first one, um, I got so many referrals after six months. Uh, and then the, the second group, I got some, but uh, the difference is like a few times, like three or four times more referrals from the group that I brought always something. And I, I kept saying, appreciate, uh, thank you so much for the business. And then I realized that once I say, thank you so much for just working with me, just uh, open up their heart. So when they found um, somebody who's who could be a good match for me, they referred to me. But if I didn't bring anything, uh, if I didn't show my appreciation to my client, they're busy, right? So they don't think about me. <laughs> so when uh, they're just want, uh, they're asking like, if they ask, do you know any good accountant or do good consultant? Maybe they think of me, but they are not promoting me. So that's the difference. Once you are appreciated, you feel like appreciation back. So that is uh, uh, the magic of appreciation. So the money is the same thing. If you appreciate money, money will appreciate you back in a form of bringing uh, its friend and then come back to you. So whenever I spend money, I always say, thank you, money. Come back with my with all your friends. <laughs> You know, I love that. all the friends. You know, I have a nice house, so I know how <laughs> to spend money, how to manage money. So bring all your friends back, and uh, this is this gives me such a fun feeling. So I don't mind paying a lot of taxes. Uh, I don't mind paying uh, huge bills um, because um, I know the money I spend will bring so many friends. So far, so good. That's right. We'll have a party. We'll have a money party. Bring all your friends. I have plenty of room, (laughs) plenty to eat and drink if you eat and drink. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's um, um, that's how I feel. 
But the great thing is they don't eat, they don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. They're breath That's what we do. <laughs> oh, man. You know, that's really interesting. It makes me think um, when I'm not coaching, when I'm not doing this podcast, I sing. And I've got a band. And that's something that happened during COVID. It, it's old for me. I used to sing professionally, but it came oh, back. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. I get to do meaningful songs. We we perform for gigs, for thought leaders before their workshops. And we're also doing these sound healings and meditations. Nice. And I'm thinking about what you're saying, Ken, because in the last, uh, we did a retreat. Someone was doing a retreat in Arizona and they hired us to come out. And each night before they did their, um, they started their workshop, we would, entertain the audience. And I found, we also did morning meditation and sound healings, and I found something coming through me I'd never done before. Some of my singing is very spontaneous and ethereal. I don't know what's going to come out. It's a little bit channeled, but it's healing. And I found myself saying to the people attending, singing, thank you, thank you. You know, in the meditation, giving them um, affirming things to do and be and healing ways to see things and then saying thank you thank you for being you thank you for being here you know for the the great work you've done so far and and i'm so encouraged hearing this that to keep doing that because how many you know isn't that beautiful to give to money who's who doesn't receive a lot of gratitude and also people you know that you're describing you do for your clients or that i do through my singing that people how often do we hear that kind of appreciation just for being. I think that's very meaningful. Yeah, so whenever I see a band in a hotel, mm -hmm. I always have a $10 bill um, with me and uh, to the, each musician, I make sure that everybody uh, gets, gets my tip and that's happy money. <sighs> yeah, and you wanna support your arts. That is yeah. powerful. Yeah, and the, amazingly, a lot of musicians are just tell me uh, you are the first customer, you know, um, that uh, who give me a tip, or sometimes like you are the first customer in, in the whole week, and it's a uh, it's Friday night, <laughs> like so nobody has tipped you, <laughs> nobody, you know, nobody. like so uh, it's amazing that uh, we are not appreciated. Not many people uh, give praises for you, so I'm the one who's like a happy panda or Santa, <laughs> Santa Claus, uh, who, who who just say. You did a great job. Oh, I love that. I need an animal. Well, my favorite animals are sloth and bat, so I don't think I could be a happy, happy sloth. That won't work <laughs> very well, but I'll, or happy lion. That will work. I love that. Happy panda. That's a beautiful uh -huh. idea. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, hi, Ken. Hi, little Ken, <laughs> mini Ken. That's yeah. <laughs> You know, towards the back of your book, I loved your book, and it's the second time I've read it now. Towards the Thank back you. of your book, uh, I don't know why this is the first time I caught it, but you said that you attended an all boys Jesuit school. Yes. How was that for you? How did that inform who you've become? You know, the, the, the person who was a Japanese priest uh, came up with this idea that Bushido, the, the way of the warrior, and also Jesuit philosophy, he combined two, uh, which made our school very strict and tough. So um, uh, our priest uh, says, said something like, can you die today? You know, so like, uh, you know, carpe diem, like seize a day type of idea. So as a samurai, you know, warrior, can you just kill yourself at, at, at every night? Think about it. Is this my best day ever? So like uh, the, the, the strictness of Jesuit and the strictness of, of the samurai are combined. So uh, they talk about love and at the same time, they talk about serving other people. So it, it, the, the school really formed me into this uh, idea that um, you're here to serve. And I think it's still with me. Uh, I forgot a lot of what my uh, priest and teacher said but I still remember that, that their dedication. So I think it's, it's in me. I have a lot of, so many fun memories with a, a Jesuit uh, priest and my friends. Uh, they're my best friends still because we're, we, we survived the war together. The war of school, are you talking yes. about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we, there's a lot of physical violence, you know, just 
say we get slapped and I think mm. uh, all the teachers have to go to jail right? if, if, it, if they did the same thing now. Wow. How was that for you? Was that, did you resent them? I kind of felt uh, more love um, from them because they're not just uh, uh, acting out. Uh, so there's just, uh, there's love behind it. So uh, like 80 or 90% of it, you know, and like 10% of it, I th we thought, it's just their frustration, <laughs> you know. But I, I really enjoyed the uh, friendship that we formed because of uh, outrageous teachers. We kind of like, we bonded. So uh, once again, it's like that, you know, that, that toughness uh, and craziness sometimes uh, really made us uh, um, uh, so close. So I'm so close to um, some of my um, uh, junior high and high school graduates because you know it's a six year intensive like war training um so it was so much fun did you have to read a lot were you well read yes and also we have to read the bible so i'm one of the uh, very few japanese who had to read the bible every day <laughs> so you know i understand how uh north american you know kids sometimes have to go through the bible and uh, um so and I learned a lot. Um, so I, I so enjoy the philosophy and the religion from the West. And also we learned about uh, Zen uh, at the same time. So um, I'm the hybrid now. You're the businessman who also is Zen. Yes, so I'm, I'm half Zen, half, half Christian in a <laughs> sense. You know? Interesting well, hybrid. Yeah, it's an interesting hybrid, that is. And you, I've heard it said out in the world that our challenges with money mirror our larger challenges with life. Mm -hmm. Is this just a myth or is there some validity to that? Why or why not? Uh, money pulls out uh, a lot of emotions, both positive and both, uh, ne po positive and negative. You know, money makes you feel so loved, so warm, so happy and so excited. At the same time, money can give you the worst feelings of all, like, you know, jealousy, uh, uh, com competition and depression. And, uh, you know, money makes you feel scared and all kinds of emotions. So um, unless you're careful with uh, how you feel, um, it really ru it could ruin your life. So money can definitely transform your life in positive way and negative way. So um, you have to pay much attention to that. Mm. Do, have you ever had money problems? Is there ever a time when it was a little out of control? I'm so lucky. You know, I had a great father and also met my mentor. So I could manage um, uh, fairly well. You know, I have no, I have not many financial problems uh, because I never borrowed anything from my money. I bought oh. this retreat center in cash. So um, when it, uh, if you just um, do very conservative, you don't have to worry about money. You know, like can I pay the mortgage and stuff? If you just pay everything in cash, uh, you don't have to worry about mortgage or uh, make both ends meet. So uh, if you play smart, uh, you don't have to worry about money for the rest of your life, which I'd recommend because we consume so much energy uh, toward uh, worrying about money, thinking about money, planning about money. So my ideal situation that I can think of is money becomes air in your life. You know, it's air. So you know it exists and you breathe in and breathe out every day, but you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. You focus on what's important in your life and money can help you, but uh, otherwise money is invisible. It's air. So you don't have to manage it. You just breathe in and breathe out. Wow, I've never heard that before. So if you pay cash and you live conservatively, but happily with money, you bless it and, and talk to it and so forth, then how much debt is too much debt? How, what, what is the line there? So um, a lot of money teachers say, you know, uh, debt is leverage, but I'm against the idea. Uh, when the economy is going up, it's great. But I, I, I've been saying that it's going to be a big crash coming uh, last year. And then I think uh, we're going to experience a lot of hardships from now. Uh, so 
at the, in the time of going down, uh, going down the hill, uh, there is another rule. You know, when you when everything's going up, uh, debt can be a good leverage. But when you go down the hill, it could go against you. So you have to know which trend uh, you're 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 on. So I think uh, from now that will pull you down uh, in that sense financially. Mm. Uh, even though I, I just uh, teach people how to turn um, uh, how how you relate to um, that uh, can change your life. But I think uh, for your peace of mind, if you have no debt, I think you can sleep better. I agree with that. And now I'm so curious about two things. You just said how you relate to debt mm -hmm. uh, is very informative. Will you break that down a little more? Yeah, sure. So I teach people um, and I ask them if they have debt, how does that make you feel? A lot of people, a lot of people internationally, they say the same thing. I feel heavy. Yeah, very. I feel heavy burden on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. That's what debt makes you feel. So that's why I don't have any and I don't want to have any. Mm -hmm. But if you have that, uh, can you think of that um, as heavy lift, uh, heavy weight or uh, trust from somebody? Uh, think about the situation like a few years ago when they got when they when you got the loan, uh, they trusted you that you're capable of giving back the loan. Otherwise, they don't uh, they didn't loan you the money. So uh, the debt is not the heavy dark energy upon you. It's the, it's the trust um, that a bank or strangers or your family members are placed on you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why you could buy a car. That's why you could um, get a house or something that is uh, expensive. If you wait uh, until you can pay pay everything in cash, it takes a lot of time. So they trusted you, your ability to pay back. So uh, interest and the mortgage is something that uh, to appreciate the trust, you you can show um, your appreciation in a form of interest. So you pay back every month saying, thank you so much for trusting me. I pay back this um, principal and interest to say, thank you so much for trusting me. Thank you for letting me use this house. Thank you for letting me use this car. Otherwise, I had to walk to my to my you know work um, workplace. So if you can feel the debt is uh, a love and trust upon you, that will lift you up. So if you just turn um, what you think and 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 your belief system into a more positive and loving one, um, you feel much lighter. Very interesting. Yeah, and that makes sense. And earlier on, you said you predicted. And I know before we started the show, when you and I were talking, you said that you had predictions. Mm -hmm. I think uh, either during COVID or before COVID that ended up coming true. Can you talk about some of that? Yeah, at the uh, very early stage of uh, COVID, um, I was actually going to start my world tour. Remember, you know, I published Happy Money. And then uh, just imagine uh, where is my first city? <laughs> you know, that first city happened to be the epicenter of the oh, COVID. Wow. So in January, I heard my lecture, which is uh, scheduled in uh, February, was going to be canceled because uh, the city, um, city office doesn't allow big gathering. And I asked them, why? And uh, there is this some kind of inf uh, influenza going on. And so they're shutting all the public uh, gatherings. And like, I feel re very weird. And uh, there is no word of COVID or anything, right? That's the, the, the end of January. <clears throat> and then my, our event was canceled. And then I, I was in touch with my friend. And, uh, um, and uh, I was uh, more aware of what's going on. And I just did a little research, the, uh, if there's any flight going out from the city. And I realized there's many direct flights to Tokyo, to New York, and all the Milan and all the other uh, major cities. So when there was only 20 cases in North America, I predicted in my uh, YouTube channel that this is gonna be global. Everybody 
you know, there is a, a big earthquake happening. So the big tsunami is coming. It's going to take a month. So you have one month to prepare business into online and get, uh, you know, go out and just uh, buy masks and, uh, you know, get groceries. All the people who listened to me was so ready when the shock will just um, hit me. So I have thousands of people appreciated me for predicting there will be a big uh, tsunami coming. And I'm doing the same thing uh, for economic, for economy. So I said at, at around the time, which is two years ago, uh, there will be three stages. One will be the COVID, which is uh, I studied a lot about uh, uh, Spanish flu and it lasted uh, about two years. So Spanish flu uh, about 100 years ago, you know, lasted two years. So this is going to end uh, in two years. A lot of people say it's going to be over in a few months. No, 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 no. It's going to take two years. And after that, what's going to happen is uh, economic crash. You know, it, after that, it's, uh, you know, Great Depression happened. So we are going into that. And, and also, I don't want to uh, see that coming, but there could be a World War Three. But this time, there may not be so many bombings and stuff, but there will be an economy and the cyber wars. So you have to fasten up your seatbelt for big change, but you don't have to be afraid. Hang in there for another four years, which is uh, you know, by 2026, I think we're going to experiencing something beautiful. But until then, uh, we have to go through a lot of uh, uh, things, which I feel and I, I, I think I, uh, we need to be ready for a big change, which is going to happen uh, fairly soon. And I think which is happening right now in the Wall Street and in China and in Europe and, and all over the world. So, uh, but we, uh, once again, I don't want you to be afraid because this is gonna um, bring us together. You know, we're in this together. So as much as it's scary, but we it need is, to be. It's terrible news in a way, having gone through what we've gone through Mm -hmm. for this long and then to hear another four years this does feel biblical however i am very curious what's the connection how did you piece together a health crisis a world crisis then connect it to finances mm -hmm. and then world unrest <clears throat> how did that puzzle manifest for you to understand right so uh, my mentor wahe takeda uh, he uh, believed in 80 year cycle of uh, history. We repeat uh, uh, the, the you know, history. So uh, what happened 100 years ago uh, are likely to happen now because you know, we forget. And uh, uh, I experienced uh, a huge real estate bubble and a stock bubble uh, in 1980s in Japan. I was a te uh, teenager and also I, it was in, in my 20s. I saw a lot of smart people invested so heavily in real estate and everybody said it's going to go up. Uh, it's a new economy. And the same thing happened in US and the same thing happened in China. So I've been telling everybody, you know, watch out because uh, this cannot last forever. <clears throat> and in China, it's, uh, they're having such a tough time uh, because nobody wants to buy real estate. So it's going to go down and the same thing is going to happen everywhere. So all the positive people will go down uh, because you cannot stay that way. It's a, a universal law. So um, uh, and, and also, and I'm doing, I've been doing a lot of money seminar, right? And uh, very young people like age 17, 18, and also people who, uh, who are school teachers, uh, I call them money in different people. And they don't think about money, but they asked me uh, last year, Ken, I want to invest uh, into uh, Bitcoin. Do you think I can do that? Then I realized, okay, this is a story in 1929 when a shoeshine boy comes to a stock dealer and saying, uh, I'm buying a stock, which one is going to shoot up? And then he went back to the office and he sold everything. And a few weeks later, a big crash happened. The same thing. When money in different people suddenly realize that they are late for the party, they come in. That's when 
uh, the bubble starts to um, uh, burst. So uh, I said about uh, sometime last year, uh, it's not the time to invest because everything is going to go go down. That is the law of economy. And then uh, if you just Google, you know, um, in 1920s and it goes like that, and then it wants to go up and down. So we are the last stage of the bubble. So let's see what happens in October. And so the next time uh, when we have a chat again, you probably said, Ken, you know, it's been an interesting few years and then look what happened. But after that, I think we're going to experience something beautiful. So uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to that. And until then, we have to really hang in there and then uh, focus on what we can give to the world. And then uh, if you have, feel like you have more than enough, this is a time that you share your wealth, yes. you share what you have with other people. And uh, um, if you did that, they will remember you forever. Yeah. So your kids will be appreciated. You'll be appreciated. Uh, people, uh, uh, they send you love uh, for the rest of their life. Yes. So um, so there is this saying, uh, uh, when uh, famine happens, you know, uh, rich people have to decide. They open up their storage unit and then release all the food for the hungry mm -hmm. or just uh, stay inside and and watch people uh, suffer and die. And my mentor, Wahed Takeda, was looking for a day when he, when everything uh, goes bad, he is so waiting for the day to where to share his wealth and share all the food. So he, he said to me, Ken, when that happens, just um, uh, I hope you become the one who support all the people uh, who are hungry and uh, you know thirsty. So I'm, I'm getting ready for the next big step. When you say it is not a time to invest, but mm -hmm. there may be some people who have disposable income, and isn't it actually a good time to invest? I understand the story you told, different mm -hmm. than what I'm meaning here. Yeah. But a good time to invest in something when it's so low, because if you can ride it out for the four, six, ten years or more, it will eventually go way up and be worth the investment. It may be, but the trend is so different. You know, it's not like ten year train trend that goes down and go up. Uh, we've experienced so much high, 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 high. So it could do go down for many years. I see. Yeah. So instead of uh, um, investing in visible assets, I talk about a lot about invisible assets. Invisible assets is something that you cannot see. Trust, friendship, mm. and also popularity, you know, and, and those things are super important, but overlooked. So instead of um, investing in real estate, gold, and all, the, all those things, you have to invest in people's memories. That uh, um, if, if people remember who you are, they'll come back to you after the crash or the economy. Uh, and we're going to experience a new, uh, a totally new uh, transformation. We may uh, end up using uh, a different currency in a few years. And then uh, when that happens, if people still remember you and who you are, and uh, they can come back to you, because after everything, we're still going to need uh, need to eat, need to cut hair, need to wear something. Uh, so, you know, uh, we keep going. So instead of just investing in something that may lose all the value, uh, uh, like, you know, that happened to some uh, cryptocurrency uh, last year and this year, you can invest in people. You take out your friends to dinner or just give some little cash or just do something nice for your friends and uh, um, uh, distant friends. And they remember you. And so they want to pay you back uh, in a in the future. So I uh, recommend if you're not super wealthy, I think you should invest in people's memories that um, so you'll be trusted by people. Yeah, it's so perfect. In your book, you talk about people who want to transform their relationship with money. Mm -hmm. And your book talks about creating a happy flow of money. Yes. And then you give examples. And I'm going to just say a few. And then if you can riff on that and give some suggestions, mm -hmm. donating money, giving yes. money to friends, sending a gift, 
etc. What are some other happy money flow suggestions? So uh, this is what I did 20 years ago before I became a writer. I started writing uh, short essays on happiness and money. And I stapled them and started to give away to my friends. And I found it so much uh, fun uh, sharing my ideas. So I ended up uh, printing 3,000 copies. And that became another 3,000, another 5,000. And by the time I gave away 100,000 physical copies, booklets, a publisher called me and uh, they asked me to write a book. So uh, share with them something you have uh, in a form of digital or uh, physical presence. So if you are willing to share, people notice you. So um, uh, the reason why I'm not afraid of money is that uh, it's not that I have a lot of money. It's not that it's, it's just uh, if I lose everything, I have so many people who are going to help me. So they'll make sure um, that I'm not going to fall. So I have so many trusted friends and uh, all the people or perfect strangers who are probably going to help me. Because in the past 20 years, I've helped them grow, helped them transform their relationship. So I know that they're going to bring me some food when I'm hungry or money or the people. So I have a complete trust that I have given away so much already, so I'll be well taken care of. So I uh, not only I have money, but I have all the fun network that I created over the years. So that is far more important. So you need to have more friends who let you stay for one week. If you have more than 50 friends, you're okay. Yeah, so it's a year. You need to, <laughs> yeah, you need to have more friends than money. Amazing. You know, three years ago, when you were on the show, I'll just say your show still just on one platform is I don't know if it's the most views, but look, I've been doing this over 15 years, mm -hmm. but you're up there. You're one of the shows with the most. And I notice things. I still get comments on our interview together. So mm. it's like this energy you're talking about right now, mm -hmm. this gifting, this giving, this love, this appreciation, this arigato. It, it is even felt, I think, by people through your interviews, this mm -hmm. kindness you. that you have. Thank you so much. And uh, that's why my books have been sold more than 8 million copies. And my podcast has been downloaded over 50 million um, uh, people. It's almost half the population of Japan. Beautiful. The reason is that uh, when we worry, you know, um, we can solve a situation by sharing, you know, by making more money, uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot heal uh, your worries. So only by sharing, only by giving, you can feel that you have more than enough. That's a weird thing. You know, uh, theoretically, you think that if you gain more money, uh, your money worries will disappear. But I have interviewed a lot of millionaires and billionaires. Uh, making more money is not the solution mm. because they feel like they, they need more. Mm. So instead of going for more, you have to go to the different direction. Um, when you feel like you don't have enough, you have to start sharing, sharing a dollar to the box, sharing dollar to even a quarter or a dime or a cent. By giving away, you just realize, maybe I have more than enough. This feeling of maybe I have more than enough is far more powerful than making a thousand dollars more because uh, uh, mm. money is energy. So by only by sharing, you know that you have. Knowledge is the same thing. Love is the same thing. When you feel like you need more love, not just if you ask for love, you don't get it. But if you just share your love, you feel loved. Mm -hmm. So that is a that is a law of the universe. Such a good message to just give freely and it, it comes back just like the 50 friends and you have a place to stay one week, a uh, different friend every every week during a year, God forbid, if you need it, you're good. Yeah. yeah. And that could be a lot of fun. So I, I can't, I know I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> that is a great way to look at it. It's an adventure to couch surf. Yeah. Also in your book, you asked this question, if money were a person, 
who would it be? Mm -hmm. And all I could think is, wow, with all the people you've worked with, with your radio show podcast, with your speaking, your seminars, et cetera, and your online, what kind of answers have you heard to this over the years? What have been some standouts about what money would be if it were a person? Yeah, and also the other uh, favorite one is, if money was an animal, what would it be? Huh. <laughs> so, yeah, if uh, money was a person, you know, uh, some people say uh, my neighbor, you know, or like uh, 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 interesting thing was a uh, comment was serial killer. <laughs> you have to watch out. Otherwise, money is going to you know, kill you. And if money was a, uh, a animal, people say it's a cat. You you like to pet them. But when you need them, they're gone. <laughs> cats are like that. Right. <laughs> so uh, cats could be uh, uh, dogs. Right. If money was a dog. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a German Shepherd or a you know, golden retriever? It's a different kind of dog, right? So, so just enjoy, um, just playing, play with it. And then you realize that you are more scared of money or you, you may find it more fun. And ideally, I wish, uh, I, I hope uh, money becomes your best friend. You know, best friend will do anything for you. I did a world tour uh, a couple months ago and uh, uh, I just came up this idea. Uh, I was invited to Germany. I was invited to Australia. Maybe if I go west, 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 I can go to uh, uh, um, uh, Australia. It's like you know Christopher Columbus had this inspiration. If you go west, I go to India. <laughs> and then you know money. Money was my best friend. So I call up uh, my travel agent, and then uh, my world ticket was uh, there the next day. Right. So uh, if money. If you let money help you, what you get, what you want to get, uh, money can be your best friend. And so uh, a best friend will do anything for you. So you don't need to worry about it. Uh, when you buy a house or like retreat center, money will there can, you know, go bless the world by with this retreat center. So that's I, I got this 10 years ago. And then we can sit six, 60 people here. A lot of them got married, you know, they met here. So, uh, and also I, I, I have a, at least uh, a dozen babies, um, you know, out of this place. Panda so, babies. Yes, yes. So, um, I, you know, and one day I'm going to tell them, you know, your parents met here and then you're made here. Oh, wow. Amazing. Really. Oh, that's big what you're giving the world. So Ken, <laughs> yes. do, is there a ritual, is there a practice that you use every day to keep yourself spiritually fit, grounded, anything like that, healthy, happy? So I, uh, before or just when I'm, I'm going to wake up, you know, I spend, I usually spend a few minutes in, in bed and start thinking uh, what my day would look like, you know, it's sort of like a drowsy mode. And, and, you know, like I, I woke up at six o'clock uh, uh, this morning, I'm going to have a, you know, I'm going to be interviewed by Debbie. Wow, I'm so excited. She's like, and, you know, I remember you're like a Hollywood type of person. So like, I'll be interviewed by this Hollywood celebrity. Wow, you know, <laughs> I can't wait. And then after that, I'm going to have a, a staff meeting, which is fun. And also, uh, this is uh, the last day uh, for the retreat wow, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, a, a lot of people will remember this is a day that they're going to change their life because we're going to come up with the titles for the books. And then think about 50 people writing bestsellers. At least we can impact uh, 1 million people from this room right next to this. So, th and then I hear all the thank you from the future clients of them. And then I become like a grandfather, right? <laughs> because they're the, they are my babies, they're my kids, and then they're gonna um, uh, have another uh, kids. So like their books are like my uh, my grandchildren. So in my bed, oh God, it's gonna be so much fun. And then I can't wait to get up. So that's how I start my day. That's beautiful. Do you set an intention? It sounds like part of what you're doing is imbuing everything with the excitement and the joy like telling it it's going to be wonderful it's going to be exciting it's going to create into the future and all these ripples yes it is and at the end of the day 
I think I think back on the all the fun things that happen and, and I appreciate it. And on the negative th- side, I think of uh, some bad things, what I did or what somebody did to me or didn't do to me. And then uh, just uh, feel the impact. I was hurt. I don't know what I did. You know, I said something um, so bad. <laughs> and like uh, yesterday, I said something so bad to one of the participants. You know, uh, one lady's uh, skirt was so beautiful and the nice fabric. So I th- I said, wow, this is a beautiful uh, fab- uh, fabric. And I said, uh, that's like, uh, the best curtain, uh, you know, on the store. Like, oh my God, why did I say that? You know, <laughs> I'm sure she felt offended, but she laughed and no, 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 I didn't mean that, you know. But I wanted to say it's a first class, but I said, wow, it's like a great curtain. <laughs> and then, then, why did I say that? So, like at night, oh, I'm so sorry for what I said, but I forgive myself for being so stupid, just telling uh, a beautiful person. Uh, your skirt looks like a beautiful curtain. <laughs> How bad is that? But I forgive myself. And, okay. And she forgave me and she laughed with me. So, okay. So I forgive myself and I, I laugh and smile. And I think I lose my consciousness and I think probably I go to bed. Mm, nice, nice. That's like t- taking inventory before you go to sleep. And Yeah, so both positive and negative. And I just try to just clean everything, clear all the energy before I go to sleep. Mm. So, I, so I think probably I'm different uh, because I do a lot of negative work too. People probably appreciate a few things and then go to sleep, but I uh, deal with the negative too. So yeah. both positive and negative and all reset and then uh, go to sleep. And the best place for people to find you is KenHonda.com. Yes, I'm translating a lot of information into English, and I studied the English online community uh, called Arigato Living Community. We have uh, a lot of people from 20 different countries, so we get together once or twice a month and learn about happy money and learn from each other, and that is my favorite time too. Nice, and this is Dare to Dream, Ken, so what are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? So I hope we feel we feel less stressed about money and uh, focus on what's more important in our lives. Uh, in our families, you know, we fight because we think money is more important than your your kids' feelings. So uh, we may get up or upset over money. So I hope we will focus more on what's important and then deal with money later. And if we start doing that, we have more intimate relationship with a, with, a, uh, with a couple, with a family, and with friends and companies and countries. So my dream will be we have uh, 5% less stress about money and then see what happens. And if we can do that, let's uh, decrease uh, 10% more. So if we focus on more on our loving communication than frustration, I think we'll have a more um, beautiful energy in our life. And uh, by experiencing more happy and peaceful energies in your life, you know uh, there is another way of living. So uh, instead of living in fear, um, we can enjoy life more, even though negative things happen. Uh, Even though what you you did certain things wrong, like I said such a terrible thing to a person, and then can you forgive yourself? And can you forgive other people for doing things wrong or uh, not doing things right? Very good. Thank you so much for coming back today. It's been thank so you fun. so much. Yeah. I hope there will be another uh, the third time. You know, <laughs> I hope uh, you'd say, "Oh, I had enough of Canada." You know, I have to. <laughs> I hope you invite me back, and uh, I'm sending all my love and uh, blessings that I have for you, Debbie. Mm-hmm. You're doing such a great, beautiful work and all the viewers across the um, across the nations and um, uh, I hope all the great things will keep happening to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody could receive that. That was a real blessing. Thank and you. I end today's quote. Thank you. 
Arigato. I end today's yeah. show with this quote from William Ward. Before you speak, listen. Before you write, think. Before you spend, earn. Before you invest, investigate. Before you criticize, wait. Before you pray, forgive. Before you quit, try. Before you retire, save. Before you die, give. Reminder, Ken's book is Happy Money, and you can go on Amazon and all major bookstores to get it. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Send it to people you know who will love it, like it, leave a comment. I read all of them. And thank you so much for joining us today. Next week in the show, I am featuring master trans channel and psychic medium Riz Mirza. He will be here to channel and grace us with his wisdom teachings. Thank you so much for joining us today and let money flow through you and through your life like air. And may you have way more than you thought you ever could beyond your wildest dreams.